Shabbat Shalom. <clears throat> you in the sanctuary, I should introduce myself because I'm not usually here. Well, there are some people who don't know me. Welcome, Shabbat Shalom. Glad to have you. I know all these other people. I'm the substitute. I'm Rabbi Alan Katz. Welcome. So I uh, greet each other. Shabbat Shalom. Most of you do know each other, but thank you for coming. And that's uh, Elise Wojciechowski, and uh, she is. We worked together for a number of years here. Some of you might remember that. Um, I don't remember it because I can't go back that far. And it's a pleasure to be here this evening with you. And um, a really a pleasure because I thought you'd all be at the Jazz Fest. A Shabbat blessing. God of rest, thank you for the week that has passed. Thank you for this Shabbat. Bless those around me with your love and your light. Let it shine on me as well. Help me to live a life of kindness and service guided by Torah and mitzvot. Let me see others through your eyes with compassion and understanding. Let me see myself through your eyes with forgiveness and grace. May your goodness rain down upon me from this Shabbat until the next and upon those I love in all the days of our lives. Amen. We'll continue by turning to page 122, and I invite up Barbara Schwartz to kindle the Shabbat candles. As these Shabbat candles give light to all who behold them, so may we may our lives give light to all who behold us. As their brightness reminds us of the generations of Israel who have kindled light, oh may we in our own day be among those who kindle light. O oh, source of light, am I reading the wrong? Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Malakalam, Asher Kedishanu, Lenitzatel Bitzivanu, Bahadlik Mir Shal Shabbat. Amen. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, who hails us with mitzvot, commanding us to kindle the light of Shabbat. Oh, hear my prayer, I sing to you. Be gracious to the ones I love and bless them with goodness and mercy and peace. Oh, hear my prayer to you. Let us light be his lights and see the way to you. And let us say Amen. Let us light and see, see the way, way to, to you, and let us say Amen. Baruch atah 
Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, asher kitshanu v'mitzvotav, v'tzivanu, lehad likner, lehad likner, shel shabbat. Amen. We continue by turning to the Kiddush on page 123. I invite you to rise in body or spirit. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Borei puri hagafen Amen. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher kitshanu v'mitzvotav You may be seated as we turn to 124, and we will say this prayer responsively in the middle of the page. May the door of this synagogue be wide enough to receive all who hunger for love, all who are lonely for friendship. May it welcome all who have cares to unburden, thanks to express, hopes to nurture. May the door of the synagogue be narrow enough to shut out pettiness and pride, envy and enmity. May its threshold be no stumbling block to young or straying feet. May it be too high to admit complacency, selfishness, and harshness. May this synagogue be, for all who enter, the doorway to a richer and more meaningful life. We continue with the singing of Yidi Nefesh, My Heart's Delight, on page 128. Kabbalah Shabbat, the beginning part of the service, is songs and psalms. And so we will turn to the psalms or one of the psalms from this Kabbalah section before we go to Lachad Dodi eventually. So we turn to 130 for Lachu Niranina. Yeah. 
Let's read the English of that psalm together, bottom of the page. Come, let us sing joyously to Adonai. Raise a shout for our rock and deliverer. Let us come into God's presence with praise. Let us raise a shout for God in song. For Adonai is a great God, the great ruler of all divine beings. In God's hand are the depths of the earth. The peaks of the mountains are God's. God's is the sea, God made it, and the land which God's hands fashioned. Come, let us bow down and kneel, bend the knee before Adonai, our maker, for Adonai is our God. And we are the people God tends, the flock in God's care. Oh, if you would but heed God's charge this day. We'll continue with Lachado D, page 138.
145. Teach me, O God, a blessing, a prayer, on the mystery of a withered leaf, on ripened fruit so fair, on the freedom to see, to sense, to breathe, to know, to hope, to despair. Teach my lips a blessing, a hymn of praise, as each morning and night you renew your days. Lest my day be today as the one before, lest routine set my ways. Amen. Turn to 146 for the call to worship. Please rise. Joined together in the Hebrew 148. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Olam, Asher Bidvaro Ma'ariv Aravim, the Chochma Poter Sharim, who bit Vuna Mishane Itim, Machalif et Hazmanim, Misader et Takochavim, the Mishmirotehem Barakia Kertsono, Ore Yom Valila, Koleil Or Mipne Hoshech. The Hoshech Mipne or Mavir Yomu me vi Laila, Mavdil ben Yomu ben Laila, Adonai Sivaot Shemo, El Chai the Kayam Tamidim lo Halenu the Alamba Ed, Baruch Ata Adonai, Ama Ariv Aravim. 151. As you taught Torah to those whose names I bear, teach me Torah too. Its mystery beckons, yet I struggle with its truth. You meant Torah for me. Did you mean the struggle for me too? Don't let me struggle alone. Help me to understand, to be wise, to listen, to know. Lead me into the mystery. Baruch Ata Adonai, Ohev Amo Yisrael.
Continue, 157. Standing on the parted shores of history, we still believe what we were taught. Forever we stood at Sinai's foot. That wherever we go, it is eternally Egypt. That there is a better place, a promised land. That the winding way to that promise passes through the wilderness. That there is no way to get from here to there, except by joining hands and marching together. Thus it is said, Adonai redeemed Jacob from a hand stronger than his own. Praised are you, Adonai, for redeeming Israel. Baruch ata Adonai, ga'al Yisrael. We continue with Hashki Vain. Hashki Adonai, Eloheinu l'shalom, v'hamideinu shalom. Lechaim Ashkivenu Adonai Eloheinu Lishalom Behamidenu Shomreinu Lechaim Ufrosaleinu Sukkat Sukkat Shlomecha Behoshienu Leman Shemecha to know that you're near, that your presence is here. Let us lie down in peace every night. And when we rise in the day, keep us sheltered, we pray. Guide us, God, with your love and your light. Baruch Adonai. 
sukkat shalom aleinu ve'al kol amo bo Yisrael hashkiveinu Adonai Eloheinu l'shalom ve'hamideinu shomreinu l'chaim hashkiveinu Adonai Eloheinu l'shalom ve'hamideinu shomreinu l'chaim Continue with Vishamru, page 162. Vishamru Pray as if everything depended on God. Act as if everything depended on you. We turn to 164 as we rise in body or in spirit for the central core prayer, the tefillah. Adonai, sivatai tiftach, ufiyagi tehillatecha. Adonai, open up my lips that my mouth may declare you. Morita, 
הקדוש ושמך הקדוש, וקדושים בכל יום יהללוך הסלע, ברוך אתה אדוני, האל הקדוש. Let's continue in the middle of page 175. You are with us in our prayer, our love and our doubt, in our longing to feel your presence and do your will. You are the still clear voice within us. Therefore, O oh God, when doubt troubles us, when anxiety makes us tremble, when pain clouds the mind, we look inward for the answers to our prayers. There may we find you and there find courage, insight, and endurance. And let our worship bring us closer to one another, that all Israel and all who seek you may find new strength for your service. Baruch Ata Adonai, Sheotcha Levadcha Bira Naavon.
Page 178, grant abundant peace to Israel, your people forever, for you are the sovereign God of all peace. May it be pleasing to you to bless your people, Israel, and all people in every season and moment with your peace. Continue with Lo Yisagor. Let us take the next few moments for silent reflection, prayer, and deepest thoughts of our heart. Say shalom beam Roma. Yeah. 
who now turns our thoughts to those in need of healing, those who need physical healing, spiritual healing. This Shabbat, we ask for the blessings from God, from our ancestors Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, to bless and heal all who are ill. We think of particularly Shana Esther Bat Rachel, Laura Braun, Rini Feingold, Irving Manis, Michael Chartok, Valerie Brownstein, Stephen Brieger, Carol Brieger, Linda Champion, David Rosenzweig, Raymond Condon, Jen Palmer, Lynn Scharfman, Yoel David Ben Mordechai, Baruch Yosef Ben Arie Leib Yudit, Rachel Gordon, Kim Stanger Delisle, Susan Margolis, Tom Vanek, Alan Skirker, Denny Linzer, Lou Jones, John Bierman, Nina Chazanoff, and Lillian Heller. Are there any other names anyone would like to share? Jim Kaufman. Any from home? Helene Polanski, Nelson Peck. Aaron Johnson, Ann Pellman, Jim Davis, and Saul Kalin. May the holy and blessed one be filled with compassion for their health to be restored, their strength to be revived. May God swiftly send them renewal of body and spirit. May God grant strength to them, their loved ones, and their caretakers. And let us say. Amen. Amen. So uh, I have a new gadget, an iPad that I'm learning how to use. But uh, for those of you who are here after Passover, I did use it for my Devar, and I will use it again. So if I lose my place, I do have the paper backup because I just don't trust electronics. Some of you may be aware that this week's Torah portion is a double parsha, Kukat and Balak. Some years, those sections are read separately on consecutive Shabbatot. So why this year are they combined? This is a function of our unusual Hebrew calendar. The Hebrew calendar, unlike our secular calendar, which is a solar calendar based on 12 months, 
the time it takes the Earth to revolve around the sun, we complete the year. The Jewish calendar calculates months based on moon cycles. We know that the first of the month will usher the appearance of the first sliver of a lit moon, and in the middle of the month will always be a full moon. And so that's why on Rosh Hashanah, if you go outside and look up at the sky, you'll only see that first sliver. But on Sukkot and Passover, all both begin with a full moon. We also have our unique way of balancing the calendar so that the festivals Passover, Shavuot, Sukkot fall in their appropriate seasons. This is necessary because of the connection to the agricultural foundations of these festivals, as opposed to simply the historical event commemorations. Passover must be in early spring, Shavuot the first fruit harvest, Sukkot the main harvest. Now, additionally, we should note that the lunar calendar is shorter than the solar calendar by 11 days. But unlike the Muslims and their calendar, which allows the observance of their holy days to fall in different seasons of the year, we need to recalibrate so that we don't keep moving the holidays to different times of the year. Can you imagine Hanukkah in July? Sukkot, the harvest festival in the middle of winter? Dwelling in a sukkah in January, even in Israel, a challenge. For Muslims, Ramadan can be in the winter, a preferable time due to the shorter daylight hours, or during the longest days near the summer solstice. Our calendar is lunar with so solar adjustments of leap years with an extra month added. This monthly addition explains why Hanukkah can come as early as Thanksgiving, remember that just a couple of years ago, and as late as the first days of January. Sometimes we say holidays are early or late, but that's in regards to the secular Gregorian calendar. I often say Rosh Hashanah is never late, it's always on the first of Tishrei, and Hanukkah falls on the 25th of Kislev, making them neither early nor late. Calendar variations, though, are not just a Jewish thing. As today, June ends, and tomorrow, July begins, we have the meeting, meeting of two separate Pride Months. Mostly, most of our country observed Pride in June based on the anniversary of the Stonewall Riots in New York City in 1969. However, in Rochester, we celebrate Pride in July. If one looks up the reasons for this variant of celebration times, anybody know the reasons? Very deep reasons. The first, well, this isn't the reason, but Rochester is not the only one that does this with June and July. But the real reason for Rochester is simply that our local LGBTQ plus community had a picnic in July, and they wanted to continue that picnic in July, and so they made July Pride Month, adding to it all the events, including the parade coming up in a couple of weeks. I'm sorry I won't be able to join you because we'll be up in New Hampshire, but they finished Pride Month, so I won't be marching there either. The timing has kept June in Rochester as just another month, and July Pride. So while often we think of calendars and celebrations at fixed times, it's not always the case, and sometimes variances come with different perspectives. In my own family, it's difficult for me to remember all of the birthdays in my daughter's family with her seven children. This is not simply because there are nine of them. That might be the case, though. But more dominant is the factor that they celebrate two days one on the Hebrew calendar and one on the secular Gregorian calendar, which is more familiar to us. My mind is so limited, I hardly remember any of the exact birthdays in either calendar, except for the one, the one born on Simchat Torah. By the way, this can also be confusing because we as Reformed Jews celebrate Simchat Torah on one day, a day before diaspora Orthodox Jews celebrate Simchat Torah. So returning now to some of the content of our calendar-driven double Torah portion. There is a continuation of a theme in the Torah portions of how powerful or weak the Israelites appear to their neighbors. 
After an early portion, a couple of weeks ago, of Shalach, when 10 of the 12 scouts reported how inferior they felt when observing the inhabitants of the land, they declared in Numbers 13, both verses 28 and 33, Ephes ki aza am ba'aretz v'ha'arim b'tzurot g'dolot ba'od v'gam yelidei ha'anakra inusham. The people who inhabit the country are powerful. The cities are fortified and very large. We saw the Anakites. Have any of you ever met an Anakite? They are a semi-mythical group of giants, and they were there. And then the scouts continue. We looked like grasshoppers to ourselves, and so we must have looked to them. So in contrast, this week's Torah portion is a reversal of that perspective. Both the Edomites and the Moabites, you haven't met one of those either, see the Israelites as an overpowering force whom they now fear. King Balak of the Moabites even hires the powerful wizard or prophet Balaam to curse them. Balaam, who happens to be a non-Israelite prophet, meaning one who receives a communication from God, is unable to follow Balak's directive and speak evilly of the Israelites and curse them. Instead, his words come out in praise of the people he sees before him. God says to him, do not go with them, referring to Balak's emissaries. You must not curse that people, for they are blessed. And later, he continues with a verse we all know. Matovu ohalecha Yaakov. Mishkanotecha Yisrael. How goodly, how beautiful are your tents, O Jacob, your dwelling places, O Israel. This is not a curse. This is a positive looking at the Israelites from a supposed enemy. The reversal of perspective, both of the Israelites and their neighboring tribes, reminds me of a way LGBTQ plus people who have been viewed in the past by too many and are now being viewing themselves and being viewed by many of us. For too long, and continuing unfortunately today in the eyes of some people, LGBTQ plus individuals have been seen as less than others. They have and still do suffer from discrimination and lack of understanding and acceptance. It is not a direct parallel to our Torah's portion. In our lifetime and in the eyes of too many today, people who are LGBTQ plus have been viewed not as diminished grasshoppers as the spies or scouts saw themselves, but as people to be scorned. They were attacked, discriminated against, and usually forced to hide their true selves in a world around them. That is not a Jewish way to view other human beings who we claim are all created but Selim Elohim in the image of God. And now, over the past few decades, more than half a century with a more enlightened attitude perhaps or a more accepting or a more loving attitude and understanding and through the active work of so many, both within the community and among all their allies, some perspectives have changed. Laws such as equal marriage or acceptance in our military services have been enacted, although today once more we saw something handed down by the Supreme Court that is going against that trend. These changes, though, have allowed us all to celebrate pride, whether being LGBTQ plus allies and families or simply enlightened, loving individuals. These pride celebrations are necessary after the centuries centuries of being forced into hidden places for fear of discrimination and acts of violence. Yet, as we see, there has now been a backlash, which unfortunately is being expressed in too many forms and even in our so-called enlightened world. Some are offended to see it as a religious abomination. They forget that both in Judaism and in Christianity, and I don't know the texts enough in Islam to check, see, see what they say, we're told 
not to hate another person, but to love our fellow human beings. It doesn't say what kind of human being. It doesn't say what orientation human being. It says, love your fellow human beings. Some see it, though, as an influence on our young, as if it's an infectious disease, rather than providing an awareness that all humans are to be celebrated. There are many more reasons for people who don't accept human differences. I can't even list them all. Rather, I say it's our task to stand with those being discriminated against, to ensure their safety and allowing them to live their truest selves. Perhaps the lesson of Balaam is that we should look at all people, not to curse them, but seeing them as being worthy of blessing. We should not allow the forces of hatred and discrimination to lead us to curse others. May all God's creatures receive those blessings that they truly deserve simply because of their human existence. Can you hear that song? Be this God's will. We'll continue our service by turning to page 586 as we rise for the Elena. When I die, give what's left of me away to children and old men that wait to die. And if you need to cry, cry for your brother walking the street beside you. And when you need me, put your arms around anyone and give them what you need to give me. I want to leave you something, something better than words or sounds. Look for me in the people I've known or loved. And if you cannot give me away, at least let me live in your eyes and not in your mind. You can love me best by letting hands touch hands and by letting go of children that need to be free. Love doesn't die, people do. So when all that's left of me is love, give me away. The bottom of 597. Our thoughts turn to those who have departed this earth, our own loved ones, those whom our friends and neighbors have lost, the martyrs of our people whose graves are unmarked, and those of every race, race and nation whose lives have been a blessing to humanity. As we remember them, we meditate on the meaning of love and loss of life and death. The Shabbat, we offer our sympathies to those who have suffered recent deaths in the past 30 days, Shloshim, for Mike Jacobs, the husband of Shelley Jacobs, Liz Steinberg, the mother of Lindsay Steinberg McGrill and the grandmother of Izzy Obakanov, Irene Silver, the mother of Anne Shemaskin, the grandfather of Deborah Trimble, Andrea Garraway, and Sarah Meislish. We also remember the art sites, the anniversaries of the deaths of Francis Blankoff, Molly Bobroff, Morris Brownstein, Simon Tchaikovsky, Lowell Cohn, Eleanor Serkin, Lola Citrin, Anna Agidis, Joseph Fishman, Estelle Friedman, Mary Giancola, Eleanor Goldman, Benjamin Goldshine, 
George Goodman, Kenneth Green, Bernard Herman, Zelda Coleman, Ella Kukova, Mildred Lavera, Alfred Litt, Phyllis Magnani, Morel Mercier, Louis Morse, Ruth Peck, Carl Prince, Lois Cohn Rockmaker, Isidore Schiffman, Arthur Schiller, Harry Valinsky, and Seymour Warnick. Are there any other names anyone would like to share? At home? Zichronam Levracha, may their memories all be for blessing. The Mourner's Kaddish is found on page 598. Yitgadal v'yitgadash shemei rabah, v'yalmad ivrach yerutei v'yamlich malchutei, v'chayechon v'yomechon v'chayei d'chol beit Yisrael, v'agalav z'man kari v'yimru amen. Yehei shemei rabah mevarach v'yalam olomei olmaya, Yit barach, be it shabach, be it bar, be it romam, be it nase, be it adar, be it ale, be it halal, shamed kudasha, brechu, but ela min kol birchata, vishirata, tush pechata, venechemata, da miran be alma, be imru, amen. Yehe shlama rava, min shamaya, the chayim maleni, be al kod Yisrael, be imru, amen. O se shalom be roma. Uyase Shalom, Alenu vi alkod Yisrael, vi alkod Yoshvei Tevel, vi emru Amen. May the one who creates harmony on high bring peace to us, to all Israel, to all humanity, and let us say, Amen. Please be seated. Shabbat Shalom. So good to see you. And I want to thank, first I want to thank Gene Schwartz for being our greeter. You know, if I was here, you would have been back there the whole time, I'm telling you. <laughs> I was tough on our greeters. I, I didn't want a chance, like, somebody come in late and not be greeted, you know. I mean, it would be all, but you did a great job. I'm really well, proud of you. Okay. Anyway, for those who don't know, the office is closed on July 4th. I think it's open Monday, though. Uh, next Thursday is Klezmer practice. Next Friday is family service, 6 p.m. Torah chanting club on the 10th at 6 p.m. Friday the 14th, we will celebrate Pride Shabbat here at 6 p.m. And then on the 15th, the Pride Parade, the lineup is at 12 p.m. This parade starts at one and instructions will be given to you. I don't know if it's in the bulletin or it'll be on probably on snippets. Um, any mazel tubs here? No? Um, <laughs> No services during July or August, a Saturday morning, but there are Friday night. And all RSVPs and donation links for all our programming can be found on our website, tsane.org. Let's do both sing. You want me to do it? Yeah. You don't like to sing in bread in your mouth? I don't like to eat sing with bread in my mouth. Ruch <laughs> <laughs> Our closing song on page 627, Shalom Aleichem. Oh, 
Before we depart, we should commemorate that this coming week is our Independence Day. And so I have this prayer for our country. God of holiness, we hear your message. Justice, justice, shall you shall pursue. God of freedom, we hear your charge. Proclaim liberty throughout the land. Inspire us through your teachings and commandments to love and uphold our precious democracy. Let every citizen take responsibility for the rights and freedoms we cherish. Let each of us be an advocate for justice, an activist for liberty, a defender of dignity. And let us champion the values that make our nation a haven for the persecuted, a beacon of hope among the nations. Amen. Shabbat shalom. I think there's a stone egg. Shabbat shalom. Thank you, Elise.